Hello, this is the Bulletproof Vest Materials team number six, and here's our presentation for micro project number three. Bulletproof vests have a relatively short history, and they were originally created to protect soldiers and law enforcement personnel, with the first patent dating back to 1919. Bulletproof vests have gone over, have gone through many different designs, starting from steel chest plates, and now have more flexible materials that are meant to catch bullets rather than actually deflect them. The purpose of the vest are to stop incoming projectiles from entering the wearer, wearer's body and protect them from shrapnel. The material used must also be able to fully stop a material by either catching it or stopping the bullet on impact. The materials that usually will catch them include Kevlar, Tuaron, and carbon nanotubes. Whereas the materials that will actually stop the bullets on impact are plates that are usually made of steel or ceramic and will just flat out deflect the bullet or completely stop them in their tracks. There are also some new alternatives that are being created. The ABC matrix is in development by Novana and is meant to be cheaper than Kevlar. It is supposed to be created out of recycled plastic and metals which should hopefully be much cheaper and more effective than Kevlar. There are also some non-material considerations when making the best, in including cost, deployability, maintenance, and ease of replacement. All right, so one of the primary materials is Kevlar. This is uh, that first bullet is its scientific name. Um, it's an organic fiber, aromatic polyamide, family is where it comes from. You can see the uh, the atomic structure in the upper right photo there. Um, and it's made from a condensing, condensing reaction uh, in chains of polymer connected via hydrogen bonding. In the lower right photo in the blue, you can see kind of the manufacturing process where it starts as a polymer that's melted it's sent through a pump and that filter is actually a crystal filter to help align the uh, crystal structure of the Kevlar. And then it spins out and the cold air is put applied over it and then a protective finish is sprayed on it as well. And then it's spun into its uh, final form where it can be worked with and put into machines for making sheets of this material. It is high strength, high modulus, it's, it has a lot of toughness, and it's thermally stable in a wide range of temperatures. It's also chemically stable under a lot of different exposure paths and conditions. The degradation typically only comes from strong acids or bases, and as most wares of body armor, they will not be exposed to strong acids and bases. So it's uh, quite user friendly. And then Kevlar behaves as a pneumatic liquid crystal in melt, which can be spun, uh, which is kind of referencing that picture there again, where it's coming out of the spinneret and then the cold air is injected over it. Dynema or ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, UHMWPE, is another material used for bulletproof vests. Dynema is the most popular UHMWPE material used in body armor. Dynema and UHMWPE are chemically and physically identical to each other. Dynema is up to 15 times stronger than steel at the same weight and 40% stronger than ar aramids. The tensile strength of the dynema is 43 cn per dtex. cn per dtex being a unit of measuring the strength of fibers is also a high resistance to chemical and UV as well as a very, has a very high modulus. Although fibers and polymers such as Kevlar and UHMWPEs are good at stopping lesser bullets, such as pistol impacts, some situations, such as more military uses, require a hard bulletproof plate to be used in addition, as seen in the picture in the bottom left. Historically, the cheap and durable material of steel was used, but today, ceramic plates are becoming more and more common, as they weigh less than steel. The most popular compounds are boron carbide, aluminum oxide, also referred to as alumina, and silicon carbide. 
Although alumina is the most widely used due to its low cost, boron carbide is much better material in about every other aspect. It has lower density and provides better ballistic performance. As shown in the phase diagram, the homogeneity range of boron carbide extends from about 9 to about 20 atomic percent carbon. Also, its 2,723 Kelvin melting point means that temperature will not be an issue, even relatively extreme conditions. Boron carbide is also incredibly hard, a 9.5 on the Mohs scale, due to its covalent bonds. Finally, when a bullet hits the ceramic, it is able to crumble, absorbing energy as opposed to steel just deflecting it. The ballistics industry may be trending towards UHMWPEs, but ceramics low density, great temperature performance, and strong bonds still have a place in the industry. So one of our research proposals was to create a bolt for vests that is designed similar to fish scales. This would be small sections of Kevlar that are overlapped and then they would interlock, interlock each other, making um, a multi-layer surface that could be replaced. Say when a bullet impacts the vest, you would only replace the sections that were compromised rather than having the more traditional route of today, which is a large multi-layer sheet of Kevlar. When a bullet impacts that, you replace the entire sheet or in essence, the entire vest. Uh, that covers the torso. Um, this would be more economically beneficial as there would be no need to replace the entire vest then. And then it would also provide the uh, added benefit of flexibility to the wearer because the different fish scales could kind of like slide over the top of each other and bend. So you could articulate more uh, for you know, situations where police or soldiers are in tactical situations and need maximum mobility. Then we could also use the ABC matrix that was mentioned uh, for potentially cheaper material using the same style. That concludes our presentation on bulletproof vests and here are our resources. Thank you for watching.